And sometimes you just come up with something that that just works, it just hits, and then it sends you down another road, and you start looking that way, and the next thing you know, you're losing 20 flies a day in the trees, and spending half your time tying when you should be fishing, but. I'm Pat Weiss, uh, live in Port Matilda, outside State College. Been designing flies for Fooling Mill for, I guess it's three seasons now. Been fishing competitively since 2010. Prior to that, didn't even know such a thing existed. So that was, I had more time back then. Now, <laughs> it's, it uh, was all, en all encompassing for a while, but uh, yeah, I would do do a lot of different styles of nymph fishing around this part of Central PA. It's not different anymore. It was original for a while. A lot of the older guys were doing things that still nobody knows about because they don't brag about it. They don't have it on social media. There's a lot of guys around that you know have done some really really interesting things and we're really good at it. I'm not really good at talking about it. I don't have any social media or anything like that. So it uh, it's not always not always productive, but it is what it is. Um, let's see, I guess I fished for the USA in six or seven world championships. Always learned something at those different types of fish, different places, you know. And I would generally learn something there, bring it back here, and then try to prove it out. Some of my more flashy patterns have been that sort of thing. Some of the ones that I have, I guess it'll be from the time of filming this next year. Next year's flies are quite a departure from what I have normally on my palette, but that's just what it requires some places. And I brought them back here and certain times of the year in certain places it worked just as good here as it did for you know European grayling. So it's good to do those things. I come back with a little bit different perspective, try things that I never would have tried in a million years that I would have said like everybody else, oh, that won't work here, that won't work here. Try it, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You know, all you can do is Give it a try and you just put it on different waters, big water, little water. And sometimes you just come up with something that that just works, it just hits. And then it sends you down another road and you start looking that way. And the next thing you know, you're losing 20 flies a day in the trees and spending half your time tying when you should be fishing. But so what I got here is a little light version of the BP, just a little bit different shade from the normal one. Some betas you get are almost chartreuse green, some are almost black and everything in between. Sometimes a little shade change makes a difference. So I came up with one, just eh, maybe a shade and a half, maybe a shade and a half lighter than the original one. It's not wildly different, but it makes me feel better about it. Sometimes that's all that matters. As long as it looks a little different, I feel like I'm making a change. Sometimes if you just feel that you're making a change, it's like making a change. But it's still pretty simple. There's nothing, nothing crazy about it. No big flash, no appendages. Just looks like a little crumpled up betas floating through the water, waiting for something to eat it. We're going to work it underneath a dry dropper rig here. See if these fish are willing to eat things up in the drift. I'd rather not get out there and start chunking things down to the bottom, trying to catch them. There's enough flies around that 
I would think that some would be willing to eat in the drift. And we're gonna find out. These things sink pretty good, so you don't need anything heavy. That water out there is probably up to my chest, but I'm only using a 2-3 bead on it. There we go. Any little seam. Yeah, a lot of my flies are just a couple ingredients and I've just, I've never been one for a lot of appendages, flash, you know, what I considered crazy things. Now I do a little bit more of that now than I used to, but most of the things that trout eat are pretty drab. It just needs to be presented in a way that they think it's something to eat. Um, availability of some of these crazy tying materials was impossible. Like when I really started to come up with flies, you couldn't get all these things that there are now. Like I didn't even know they existed. So I went with a lot of natural materials that I could get on my own. I missed that one because I wasn't paying attention. But that, and I'm really slow. I'm a really slow tire. So the more materials I put on there, the longer it takes. And when you're a really slow tire that loses a lot of flies, you learn to trim something. So I had to trim something time-wise, make sure I keep it simple, change up the colors and shades a lot. Some things have, like I've got, like the skunk pertagone has got a couple of what people would call triggers on there. And that, that started to come about from fishing for uh, whitefish and rainbows in Oregon. And they like that kind of stuff. So it, 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 uh, it started there without the red collar on it, then came back, fished some other places, other places in Europe, ended up putting the red collar on it and leaving it just for a little. Something about black and red. If you look around, there's tons of different flies from different people with black and red. I don't know what it is, but the fish like it. So honestly, the one day I just threw it on there, I was like, that looks cool, let's try that. Fished it for a day and it worked, so I left it. Wasn't, uh, the pheasant tail, I've been fishing a variation of that for forever. A lot of times just in the natural, in natural colored tail feathers that I get on my own. And that always worked good, but so many people fish it around here. Not, not that style, but you know, classic pheasant, American pheasant tail with the peacock and all that. I just decided, well, let me find something that's a little bit different shade. And uh, found that three or four different shades. Ran that uh, light colored one through there a bunch of times on Spring Creek when it was really pressured and it worked. I was like, okay, kept it in there. And then as the years went on, started to notice that it worked good all year, and especially like in the summer. It, uh, it seemed to come alive as the, as the sulfurs and things like that would come around. And then I went different places out west and it was a shade that nobody was using. So I don't know that it really mimicked anything in particular, but it was just a little different. It's clean and it's got that, the natural barring in that fiber makes it like a two-tone fly. So you've got the, the brown towards the, towards the bead 
makes it look fancy. Sometimes just a little bit something different. Now they like the BP, the light one. Maybe we'll give them, we'll try this a couple more drifts, we'll give them a different flavor, see if they, see if they want to eat that. But what else? I, the uh, the mustard waltz was a little bit more involved. That was a fly that I come up with oh years ago in the '90s. It's trying to ah, it's trying to come up with something to match the alder fly hatch on pens, not the hatch, but the alder flies and. Uh, there wasn't anything. Nothing really looks like an alder fly larva except like midges, but nothing was that color. We started playing around with stuff. It was our first foray into homemade dyeing. Came up with something that ended up was pretty good for that. It also worked pretty good for sulfur emergers. First pattern I tied with it was just a, a thin waltz worm-ish pattern. It's there again. I'm not, I'm slow and I'm not all that good at it. So I just tied the first thing that looks like something to eat. And the first time I went out, the alder flies don't come around on pens till like June. And things can get hard that time of year. And I mashed fish on it. I was like, well, I don't need to try anything more. We'll just leave that as is. And I left it. Didn't use it for much else until I uh, accidentally used it on Spring Creek a couple of times during the sulfur hatch. And it worked. I was like, well, now I got two places that it works. And I just started using it different places. I'd always work it in. I mean, that thing worked like a champ in Bosnia of all places. There's little caddis larvae that, that are that same color. There's caddis larvae all over the place that are that color, yellows and oranges and things like that. So it ended up being a lot more versatile pattern than I thought it would be. The problem was is I, could I couldn't replicate the color. I tried, tried, couldn't really replicate it about ran out of what I had. Played with some other colors on my own that didn't work. And then I got, got Fooling Mill to take a stab at it and they came up with better than I could come up with. It's pretty darn close to the original. And it seems to work pretty good. But there's not many people tying yellowish, rusty, orangish type flies. So I think sometimes that just has is a little bonus just because it's a little bit different shade. But there are a lot of things that are that color, actually. There's some caddis flies around this part of the world that are fluorescent orange. And that, that mustard waltz will work on them too. Not, not as well, but better than something black or something brown. Then I found out that stalkers really liked it. So I changed up, put a, a black bead on there for contrast, put some flash in the body, and uh, that thing has worked all over the world and all over the country too on, on wild and stocked fish both. Not sure why, don't really care why, but I know it does. 